Hello everyone, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with a story for you from way back in my past. See, I actually used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! For people who lurk on this channel a good bit, you've seen, I'm sure, some videos of mine. You've seen me play a deck that I call Mr. Obelisk Neighborhood. Obelisk Speed Summon, Immortal Obelisk, there's a number of different names for this kind of deck. Usually the idea is that you try to special summon a bunch of little creatures and then, or monsters. I'm a magic player, can you tell? Special summon a bunch of little monsters and tribute them into something big like Obelisk the Tormentor, which is basically Emrakul. It's really hard to deal with. Or something like Vanity's Ruler. Don't let your opponent special summon anything. You know, so on and so forth. You, you try to get out these big lock pieces. Uh, or otherwise there's the one-sided wrath of Beast King Barbaros, I think he's called? It's been a while. That's actually not the deck that I've played historically. It's something that I picked up rather recently because it was a fairly cheap deck to play, or to buy, rather. Because it was a fairly cheap deck to buy, I could get into it without expending too many resources, but I'm not really that much of a Yu-Gi-Oh player anymore. I focus primarily on magic. And there's a reason for that. It's not that I don't like Yu-Gi-Oh! I very much like both games, actually. Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! for very, very different reasons. I find them apples and oranges, and I like apples and oranges both. Uh, but actually... Alright, so long story very short. There are two things that got me out of Yu-Gi-Oh! The first is that, when I was back in high school, I found friends that played magic. I got into it because they were into it. I started around Lorwyn, just sort of lurking, watching people play the game, um, because, frankly, my folks thought that magic was satanic. I couldn't actually buy my own cards. Uh, then Shards of Alara came out, and at that time, I actually could. And lo and behold, I made my own deck. None of us were serious enough to know what formats were. We were just guys playing around the lunch table at high school. So they're all playing these basically sealed decks that they put together and I didn't really know that that's what I was supposed to do as well just to keep it even so I bought a legacy deck I bought a mono black life drain aggro it, it had sanguine guard and hippie in it it was it was weird and profane command and consumed spirit and life drain it was it was weird cabal coffers when it was much cheaper than it is now um, that's one thing that happened, and I got into that game more and more, and I was put on a little bit of a hiatus from both Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! when I got to college, because college is not cheap. Not here, anyway. So, I just couldn't do it. But then, I still had my Yu-Gi-Oh! deck. I still had my Magic deck, the super casual one, but I still had my pretty competitive, for a while, Yu-Gi-Oh! deck. I couldn't keep updating it for lack of fun, so it eventually withered away, um, as far as the competitive scene went. But then something happened that got me out of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, to as nearly the extent that I had been, for good. And that is that my favorite card was banned. Not just my favorite card then, my favorite card now. If it were unbanned, I would play three of this thing, or as many as they would let me. Royal Oppression. I was that guy. Uh, I was the guy that you hated to play against because he played three Royal Oppression in his deck. Oh, it's this brutal, it's this mean card. See, in Yu-Gi-Oh, if you want to play a fair game, you go, you know, normal summon a monster or set, normal summon or set a monster, normal blah 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 blah, tribute. It's what a lot of people that got into it very early on thought of as a, a fair game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Cards like Blue Eyes White Dragon, and Summon Skull, and weird stuff like that, right? That was That's what a lot of people that used to play, or just casually observe, envision as a fair game of Yu-Gi-Oh! But Special Summoning breaks that. Because while you get one normal summon or set a turn, you get any number of Special Summons. Unless there's a restriction on the card itself that says, nope, you can only do this once, or so on and so forth. You know, Special Summoning always seems to have little sub-rules around it, but the idea is that just because you can do it, you can break Yu-Gi-Oh! wide open. And lo and behold, that's been the story of Yu-Gi-Oh! since forever, but at the very least since Synchros. Now, Synchros were around at this time. Synchros were... the they weren't new, but they were still the card type that 
Konami was trying to push for some time. And Royal Oppression was banned mainly for two reasons. Not necessarily because it was broken, but for two main reasons. One, it is horribly unfun to play against. I would play that card and then my opponent would literally would go... or something like that. It's definitely not the kind of card that you bring to a casual kitchen table game of Yu-Gi-Oh! if you want people to have fun playing with you, if you want them to not hate you. Royal Oppression is not a fun card. And secondly, Royal Oppression really hampers, really nerfs the kinds of cards that they were trying to push, which were synchros and monsters that could very quickly make synchros. Usually this involves special summoning, right? Because a synchro by definition, needs at least two monsters to come out. So if you're going to get a synchro out on turn one, one normal summon, one special summon at the minimum, if not two special summons, and then you special summon the synchro. Royal Oppression says, no, 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 no. That's not what you're, you're going to do. So that's pretty much why Royal Oppression was banned. And that was banned in September 2011. And I just decided, you know what? That's the, my playstyle. I like playing this control prison type of Yu-Gi-Oh deck, and I can't do that anymore. You know, it was always a little bit of a struggle because, you, you know, especially if you're on the draw, they just come out of the gate more quickly, and you can't negate those special summons. MST was at three at the time, and so you always had to worry about that showing up. But for the most part, it was, you know, it was a strong enough deck. I was really competitive at the time when Gladiator Beast, Lightsborns, and Black Wings, not necessarily in that order, were the big three. And playing a card like Royal Oppression really could shut those down. I could still lose, especially if I was on the draw, because they could get out so much more quickly than I could, especially Lightsborns. My least favorite card in Yu-Gi-Oh! at least was Judgment Dragon. Hate that thing. What can you do? Nowadays, if I were to get back into the game, I would try to play a similar strategy. I still like cards like uh, Vanity's Fiend, Vanity's Ruler. Um, I like playing the sort of prison-type deck. Um, especially now that a lot of players have an incentive to go second, they want to be on the draw, because at the time when I got out of the game, you had the same... I mean, you drew six on your opening turn if you went first. Now you draw five. That's not a thing anymore. So now, because a lot of players are incentivized to go second so that they can get that extra card, you want to go first so that you can shut down their special summoning. So a frog monarch shell, this sort of like fairy prison lockdown, I'm not exactly sure how I would build it, but I would want to have something with Vanity's Fiend and Vanity's Ruler because I am a terrible person, and now you all know it. So that's why I got out of Yu-Gi-Oh! I still like playing it casually, and I love thinking about the game theoretically. I definitely don't think that it's overall better or worse than a game like Magic. It, it's a fascinating game. Its, hu its resource system is so different from Magic that it changes the fundamental assumptions that govern the game itself. So for example, in Magic, if you play a one-mana draw card spell, you're getting something else out of it, right? You're playing Serum Visions, you scry two. You're playing Preordain, you actually scry two. And then you draw. You're getting something else out of it. Sleight of Hand gives you a little bit of reach with two cards. Uh, Thought Scourge lets you dump stuff in your, your opponent's graveyard. And the reason is because you're actually using mana. You're using a resource in order to do this. And so they want to give you something else as a result. They want to make, incentivize you to play that kind of card by giving you something more than just the draw. It's the other way around in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's the exact opposite. Classic example is Upstart Goblin. It's just draw a card with no additional cost on that. You don't have to discard anything, you don't have to tribute a monster, nothing like that. Just draw a card. And so, because that's really just trading a one-for-one one in a resourceless game, not completely resourceless, you only get one normal summoner set a turn, and the obvious resource is like cards in hand, but Compared to Magic, it's a very resourceless game. And so as a result, they actually make you pay something. You give your opponent a thousand life points, which in Magic would be like two and a half life points, in order to draw that card. Or uh, Jar of Greed, as another example. 
It's a trap card that draws you a card, which means you can't use it on the turn you play it, you have to wait till later. It's balanced because those cards don't use a resource. There is no mana you're tapping, there aren't anything, any... I, I don't know, there, there's nothing like that. And so it's a fascinating game from a theoretical standpoint. All of these ways to gain card advantage in Magic can't exist in Yu-Gi-Oh! because they would break the game wide open. It's why Sixth Sense is banned. You always name five or six, and you have a one in three chance of drawing five cards or six cards. What? Anyway, that's, that's a quick little story of mine. Just a, a side note. Uh, you'll actually see me play some more Yu-Gi-Oh! in the future, but it'll take me a while to get into anything competitive. I don't know if I ever will. But for right now, I still have Obelisk Speed Summon, Mr. Obelisk Neighborhood, and it's a really fun deck to play. It's not expensive at all, and it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, watching people go, okay, that's Obelisk, so I can't target him with anything, and... Oh, he can't be destroyed either, because you tributed that monster? Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's my story, that's it. I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.